got the new setup. We got a new launch monitor. Let's see what it's all about. Siege. Riley. Taz. Yeah. Set me free and give me death, there ain't no other choices When I lay down and go to sleep, I keep on hearing voices Little whispers in my head, man, is you fake or loyal? Why no water, that the sign of baby, pick your poison These little demons living underneath my bed Gotta say, it hasn't missed a shot yet That's good Subtle breathing in your closet every single evening Thought you never see me again, let's go to see Alright, time to test the big dog We'll be saying, here we come What's going on everybody? Scott Hogan coming at you today. We are going to be talking about the Garmin R10 Approach. We have it in hand now. I've had a chance to hit a few shots. Not done a full range of testing, but have had a chance to hit it enough now. Can start talking a little bit about it and answer some questions that a lot of people are having and being able to help you make a decision about is this going to be the launch monitor for you. So let's start getting into it and breaking it down. So first thing first is we have to talk a little bit about what are you getting? So this device has been unbelievably hot right now. I ordered this device on July 14th and the place I ordered from said if I would have ordered one day after that, you are not getting this device till at least the beginning of 2022. So the demand for this device is unbelievable. So if you're gonna order it now, don't expect to get it any time this year. And the reason for that is because of the cost. This device is $600 US, and it's a device that offers the ability to hit range balls, do all that stuff, but also it has simulation that comes with it. You are getting the E6 Connect, the five free courses, just like you do with the Mevo Plus. You also have access to what's called Home T Hero, which is Garmin's simulator product. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that is an option that you would have. Now, when you get the device, what are you getting? Well, it's a pretty simple setup. Obviously, you can see I'm holding the case and inside of it, once you open it up, you are going to get the launch monitor. You get a tripod that is going to hold it. It's magnetic, very easy to work with. You are also going to get a phone holder, which attaches to a very simple little charging thing here and then a little clamp I should say and then you also get the power cord okay and we want to use the power cord that comes with it although it does look like a normal micro USB and there's no warnings anywhere uh, on the box or anything saying you must use this power cord there is no brick that comes with it so you know they must be thinking yeah you're good to go using a micro USB to be able to charge this now, you do get, when you open up the packaging, you do get a card that has some kind of quick questions. It's almost like what's happened is they've paid attention to what's been going on in the simulator world and all the questions that people have, and they made kind of a quick little snippet of the FAQ, things they know they're gonna get asked. So the first one is, and I get to ask this all the time, is what are the dimensions that they want this device to work in? So the first thing it's gonna say is you need to have eight feet of ball flight. Now behind the unit from the teen ground to where the unit sits, you need six feet of space. Now it can go up to eight feet, but they say six to eight and six because of the way they have their diagrams and things, that seems to be the recommended distance that you wanna be having that unit sitting at. So six feet, eight feet of flight, so you need 14 feet of total space, if that's what you're looking at. Uh, from there, you do need to hit a real golf ball. They're very specific about that. It will not work with a practice golf ball. From there, you have to take the unit off charging to use it, so you cannot have it continuously charging while you are going. So that's something where, you know, I was using my Amiibo Plus, and I still use it, and I'm using it for 10, 12 hours, and I'm using the battery packs that does not seem possible. So it's gonna run entirely off the battery power that is in the unit. Now, it connects via Bluetooth. That's very, very nice. No Wi-Fi to connect to, anything like that. It's gonna connect via Bluetooth. So in theory then, if you're playing E6 Connect, you can be connected to the internet on a device 
to be able to do all that stuff. So that's a very nice little bonus that you have there. So that's the logistical things that go about with having the unit. Now it really comes down to, let's talk about performance. So fired up the unit, first tried it indoors. I've only had the unit for a day. So I got it indoors right away and I started hitting shots. A couple of things I noticed. One, the setup is extremely easy. The other thing I noticed is when you are using this device, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty basic. You have the Garmin app where you're gonna just connect. And the first time you connect, it's very easy. And then from there, you have driving range mode, you have the home T-Hero. Looks like there's a weekly tournament. I have not tried that yet. And then you obviously have E6 Connect, which I haven't tried yet either because the code that I have was having some issues. So I feel like that's an E6 thing, but I have to look more into that. So on the range, hitting shots, hit some seven irons. Uh, looked pretty good, honestly. Uh, didn't miss a shot. Distances seemed okay. Uh, spin rates seemed like they were a little low. And, you know, at first glance, I was seeing that it was okay with, hey, this is where the club path in the face. Okay, I mean, it seems like that makes sense. So that's what we're looking at there. And it's like, okay, that's very cool. The one thing I have about it is the way you align the unit is it's a little bit tough, especially when we start bringing in club path and club face as a metric because those metrics are very heavily dependent on where the unit is pointing. That's how you determine if these things are working. Now, when you go to align this unit, the only way you align it is you'll see on the top, it has this red line. This red line is for alignment. That's all you do. You try and point this where your target is. Now, that's a little bit tough because we're talking degrees and you know, one degree, two degrees makes a huge difference. And one degree is something we can't actually see on the human eye. So they want you to be able to figure that out and, and kind of eyeball that. I think that's really tough to do. And when we start getting into, hey, I'm making swings, I mean, that could be the difference between a shot that makes sense or doesn't make sense when we start looking at the numbers. So I'm a little concerned right off the bat before even hitting it, all right, how is this alignment gonna work? And it's putting some doubt in my mind that, hey, this might be a good thing. So hit shots though, worked. Again, it hit every shot. It did not have a no read, anything like that. So it worked very well there. Um, it did a good job with the driver. I hit driver. Um, Spin rate seemed okay. However, the carry number on the driver was exactly what I get on my Mevo Plus. I tend to think that's a little bit low. Maybe that's just the short indoor setting and radar units just are not really geared towards that short indoor setting. When I was just at a club fitting, I actually went and visited Sub 70, which was gonna be a later video. I was hitting back on Skytrack and Skytrack had me hitting the ball well over 300 yards. Now, I think that's inflated. I'm not hitting the ball over 300 yards, but it had me hitting it at 250. Mevo Plus has typically kind of had me at 250. So I think that's more of a limitation of the radar and using it on a very short indoor setting. So you're getting that, and that's my experience so far. We're getting that with this unit as well. So keep that in mind. Now, it did fire up the Home Tea Hero. The Home Tea Hero is interesting. You get to try that for 30 days uh, as a free trial. And then from there, it's $9.99 a month, or you can buy it for the year for $99.99 or uh, 100 bucks. And what it is, is you basically get to launch any course that Garmin has in their library that they use for like GPS. You know, Garmin has all these GPS watches and things, right? So they have all these courses mapped and you get to go into those courses, you can actually play and simulate off of those courses. So it's kind of a cool idea from a standpoint if I wanted to plan and try out a course for a little bit, maybe I'm actually gonna play a tournament next week, so I'm gonna try the course that I've never played and just play it on there and just see if that has any help when I go out there and play for the real thing. But it, it, it's something that we, as far as the simulator goes, you know, you're not actually getting down there. It does tell you like, hey, you're in the rough, you're losing 10%. Uh, you know, here's where you wanna aim, this is your carry, stuff like that. But you can't like see the trees and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna be playing like a competitive round on this. So it's more of a fun thing, kind of a game. If I'm gonna play, I'm gonna try E6 and see how that works. 
there's no putting with this device. You're gonna be chipping. Uh, and if you're playing Home Tee Hero, there's actually rings, kind of like Awesome Golf did with the Mevo Plus, where you're trying to hit into those rings to get your number of putts. So it worked fine. Again, shots red, things like that. But I wouldn't call it legitimate uh, simulator as much as I would call it like a tool. I could see myself using it with players when we're playing rounds, like if we're gonna go play for a tournament. It's like, hey, just come over here, let's hit shots, let's plan out the course and stuff. You know, we're not playing too serious, but we can get an idea of what's going on and how far it is to carry stuff, all of that. So that's a cool tool. But again, I don't really think it's an actual simulator thing. So I was impressed with the unit. Yardage just seemed good when we went inside. So I decided we have to get this thing outside and see what it's all about because that's a big deal for a lot of people. And I really do think that this device is meant for people to be using outside. And I do think it's a device that you're gonna be using on your phone. They even tell you in the box and in the instruction manual that, you know what, you're gonna be using it on a mobile device if you wanna project it, anything like that. You're gonna to wanna to airplay it, use an Apple TV. Most Roku's nowadays, which are much cheaper, they have that airplay option. So if you're looking for something, I would look into a Roku and uh, see what you got there. Uh, they don't work as good as Apple TVs, but it's an option for you. So they're expecting you to do that, but I think by providing you a phone clip in the box, they're expecting you to be out there on the range. And I will say the phone clip, I actually really like it. It's a very good phone clip and I like just what it does. Like if I'm hitting, I can put it on the bag and keep it very close to me and all that stuff. You do have the option for video where you can have your phone set up and have it record video of your swings as you hit them, just like on the Mevo Plus. So that's cool. But we got it outside and this is where I started to get a little bit concerned because inside I was checking out the path and the face numbers. Those are the big numbers that we haven't really had from a unit in this price range yet. And so they kind of made sense when I was inside. Now I got outside and I started hitting shots and I was like, I'm hitting them and I'm hitting like a little draw and I felt like I was hitting the ball pretty good and that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm looking at the face and path numbers and they were reversed. It would say, oh, your face, the club face was open and the path was left. It's like, well, that would create a push fade and not a push draw. And it would do some weird things. Like the path and face number rarely actually was correct. Like there was no way it could be correct based on ball flight loss. So what I had to do is I had to get the Amiibo Plus out and put them next to each other. Now, this is a difficult test to do. I'm gonna try it indoors, but these units, they sit side by side. It's hard to get them where they both need to be and say, hey, this is the exact setup for each unit. So it's a little bit of a jaded test, I think. Plus, you know, you're not directly in front of either one. That would make a big difference, especially in the club path, club face readings. But at least I was hitting shots with the Mevo Plus, and this is outdoors where it can see the ball. And the Mevo Plus had the ball flight every time. The Garmin actually was getting the ball flight quite wrong as far as outdoors was going. So that brings me back to inside and that makes me a little worried. Like, is it giving me an accurate ball flight when I'm hitting inside? So I think we need to test that a little bit with Mevo Plus inside at least. We can at least get an idea, but Mevo Plus, based on what I saw and what the ball did, just watching it fly, that Mevo Plus had it. It got it right and then the Garmin, it got some of them right but it got a lot of them wrong, to be honest with you. It got a lot of them exactly the opposite, and it was off by a good margin. So that makes me a little bit concerned. That tells me that they're not measuring data as much, and we knew that going in, but they're making some calculations. Now, can they improve those calculations? They could, but what I worry about it as a, you know, as a coach is people getting this device and saying, oh yeah, I know club path and face, it's kind of like with SkyTrack. SkyTrack, people would look at like the club head speed and they're like, oh, this is how fast I swing my driver. It's like, well, SkyTrack's not measuring your club head speed. It's just putting a number up there. And when we would actually test it with a swing radar, it wasn't exactly on. So same thing's gonna happen here, I feel like, where people are gonna be like, yeah, I do swing into out because my Garmin tells me. And in reality, 
you're not. My Garmin was telling me I was swinging with a left path and I was hitting a pretty sizable draw and ball that was push drawing and I was just doing that. And then I would hit a shot and then I would hit a decent draw, like a, a pretty you know standard shot and it would say my path is 12 right. And there's just no way I'm swinging at 12 right. That I, I know my swing well enough. I've hit enough on launch monitors. I've never swung 12 right in my life. And I know if somebody does, the ball doesn't look like that. So I, I now have some questions about that. Is it worth it? The one thing I will say outside, I actually thought the Garmin out performed the Mevo Plus a little bit on yardages. Just what I was doing was just hitting shots and shooting the yardage. Um, Mevo Plus, when I had it on, we're gonna again test it on indoor mode, but I had it on outdoor mode. What I noticed is Mevo Plus has higher spin, which I think the spin is more normal. And it seems like the Garmin is giving a, a much lower spin rate, whether it's adjusting for the range ball already, or it's just not getting the spin as much, that's, you know, who knows. I did not have the Mevo Plus on range ball mode when I did it. So it was just reading the actual spin of that golf ball. And then you have to remember when it has that, it's actually looking at, you know, it's not watching the entire flight and then the calculations come in. So I did think the Garmin did a very good job at telling me how far the ball was actually carrying because I would shoot it with a laser and say, okay, this is where it's at. I thought it did a very good job. But now you're getting into the point where, okay, this thing is now just a big time, you know, hey, this tells you yardages. Well, I can spend $150 less, $200 less, and get the exact same thing from very good devices. So is it worth it if it's not gonna give you good ball flight when you're simulating or things like that? So there's still some questions we have to answer. I'm going to be working on answering those, but wanted to talk a little bit about the first impressions, things like that, and then get any questions that people have that they need answered or want answered about the device based on what we've talked about here. So if you have those questions, make sure you comment down below, let, let me know. I'm excited to test this thing out more. I'm not done with it yet and I'm not sold, I'm not sold saying this is a bad thing yet, but I, I still think it's got a lot of value, but it, for what it's advertising, we might have to be careful. So I wanna make sure we're going through some things and seeing what's going on before you invest in it and say, hey, this is what I'm gonna to use to help me improve. So leave those comments down below and I'm looking forward to testing this thing out some more. So thanks everybody for tuning in. First look through at the Garmin Approach R10. Pretty good. Got some questions we gotta figure out though and uh, excited to do that. So click the little thumbs up if you liked the video and as always, click the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on future videos. We will see you in those future videos. Coming up very soon. We'll be at the Ryder Cup next week, but we'll have some videos next week. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you then. Peace.